Hello Year 8s and welcome back to Mathematics. In today's lesson we're continuing with our topic of measurement and we're going to be looking at the surface area of 3D shapes. So in the last couple of lessons we talked about area and we're finding the area of different shapes and we used a few different formulas and established a few different formulas to help us find the area of a 2D shape. Now we're moving on to 3D shapes and talking about what, a sur what surface area is. So by the end of today's lesson, we want to be able to understand and find the surface area of 3D shapes. We want to be able to explain what the surface area is, identify and visualize the net of a 3D shape, and also calculate surface area from a net. So, let's get into it. Now, surface area. We need to know what surface area actually is. So, the surface area of a 3D shape. So, this is where it's different to what we've looked at so far. Now, we're looking at shapes in three dimensions. Shapes that we can actually pick up and hold because they have three dimensions. This is the total area around the outside of the 3D shape. This can be found by drawing a net of the 3D shape and showing all the 2D shapes that make up the 3D shape. So. What this is, is, is if you imagine a two, 3D object, so here I've actually got a little um, juice popper, and here we've got a whole bunch of sides that make up my 3D shape. And so what the surface area is, is how much area is on the outside of this particular shape. And so for example, um, the way that we want to be able to calculate this is by drawing a net of the 3D shape. So here we've got a, if I can get this to load, there we go. Here, I've actually got a um, little kind of um, demonstration to show us this. This is a the net of a rectangular prism. And while this is loading, I might as well load up the next one as well. So here, a rectangular prism is an example of a 3D shape. And so what we want to do when we're trying to find the net, the surface area of the shape is we want to actually imagine what it would look like if it was unwrapped. And that's what this net is. So if I was to close this, open this, um, rectangular prism. So let's see if I can get this to work. It's not working quite yet. Let me give it two seconds. There we go. Let's see. So if I start to open this uh, net, this rectangular prism, and go here. Oh, there we go. Okay. Notice here it forms this kind of um, this shape that kind of looks like a bit like a um, a T or a cross, uh, and you've got a whole bunch of rectangles that make up this rectangular prism. This is the pro this process of un uh, uh, like of um, opening up this 3D shape. This is um, what we call the net here. This shape here is the net. It shows us all the shapes that make up my 3D shape. So in this rectangular prism, notice we've got actually got six rectangles. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six rectangles that make up my uh, rectangular prism. And if I find the areas of all of these shapes, that helps me find the surface area. That's just a surface area because that is all the shapes on the outside of my rectangular prism. I can do this for other shapes as well. So I can do this, for example, with a triangular prism. And if you have a look here, I could open this up. And when you see here, it's when it's unwrapped, we when we have a triangular prism, it's got one, two, three, four, five, five sides, and two of them are triangles, and we've got three rectangles. And so when we're trying to find the surface area of a 3D shape, what we want to do is find the areas of each one of these, each of these sides in this, um, in this net. And once we've found the area of each one of these sides, we're going to just add them together to give me the surface area. So that's what we're going to be looking at in this lesson. So what we want to actually be able to do is firstly, just be able to draw the net of a 3D shape. So let's have a look at these examples here. So example one, visualizing the net of a 3D object. So what we want to do here is draw the net of the following 3D shapes, showing all the shapes that make up the 3D object. So here we've got two examples, two prisms, just like the ones I had up above. Um, and here, so for example, this one here is a rectangular prism on our left, and on our right, we have a triangular prism. And what we want to do is we want to draw the net to show all of the sides that are on this shape. Now let's have a look at the first one here. If you have a look, a rectangular prism, just like the one that we had up here, this has um, six sides. And so what I'm going to draw here is I'm just going to actually break down the shape. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with this first top side here. I'm just going to draw that in. Uh, I'm going to actually give myself a little bit of space. Oh, that didn't work. Let's try that again. There we go. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space here. I'm just going to actually break down what kind of shapes make up my 
3D shape. So here, I'm just going to draw this top shape here in red. If you have a ruler, it might be a little bit helpful, uh, a little bit easier for you to do this. I'm just going to draw it here, and I'm just going to include that these two sides are equal in length. So all of these sides are equal in length. Then from there, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to connect it with a few other sides that are connected to this particular um, shape. So here, for example, if you have a look, there we go. Right underneath this red side, we've actually got this side over here, which is a rectangle. And so what I can do is I can just connect that in my net. So here I can just draw on the next side here, which is connected to my starting shape. But as you notice, there's actually a few more sides. You've got this side at the front over here, which is also connected. So I'm going to draw that to the left over here. So it's kind of like this. And now the important thing to notice here is that, well, these side have these two sides, so this um, blue side and also this pink side, they share the, um, these equal sides with the top face. So it's actually the top face happens to be a square. Now these two share a common side with the square at the top, but notice these two sides also share a common side down here. So what I can do is I can label these sides. So these two sides are going to be the same in length. Okay. Along with that side, we've also got the other side of that um, red square over here, which is over here. Oh, if I can draw it over here, this shape over here, another rectangle. And just like the other two, they're going to have the same side length here, here and here. Uh, and then from there, we can continue just drawing all the other shapes. Now, the other ones that we've missing is the one at the back. So at the back, I've got another shape over here. And so I'm just going to draw over here and I need to actually move up my net. So move up so I can, oh, no, not there. I'm going to move it down so I have a bit more space. There we go. Okay. Oh, let me move it up a bit just so I can fit in. Uh, over on the back side, I've got this purple side here, like so. And once again, these all have the same side length. And on the other side, well, at the bottom, I've actually got this other um, shape as well. And this one over here is going to be the exact same as the top red square. So here, I'm just going to draw another one, another rectangle, uh, another square in this case over here. And these have the same side lengths. Okay. So that's how we can draw the net of this 3D shape. We're just trying to imagine what would happen if we unwrapped the shape. The thing, a few things to notice here is that some of these shapes are going to, um, there's some of these shapes are actually going to be duplicate versions of the other ones. So for example, um, at the top, I have this red square. And so at the bottom, this green square is actually going to be the exact same shape. So here I drew both of these exact same shape. Um, and also sometimes when sides are, uh, when you have 3D shapes with the same side, they're also going to have the same measurements as well. So for example, this blue side had the same dimensions as this pink side and this yellow side had, had also the same dimensions as those guys as well. Okay, so that's drawing our net of our rectangular prism. Let's have a go at this next example with our triangular prism. Now with a triangular prism, here we've actually got a few, here's, we've got a triangle. So let's actually start off with the top face. We've got this triangle up here. I'm going to draw it over here like so. And I'm just going to also note that we've got two pairs of equal sides there. Okay. Then from there, we're just going to see what happens when we unwrap a few of our shapes. So here I'm going to start off and actually connect it with this rectangle over here. So I'm going to draw a rectangle down here like so. And actually, I'm going to build off of that rectangle. So if you have a look at the bottom, we've got a, connected to our rectangle is this other triangle. And that triangle is actually going to be the exact same shape as the one at the top. So here, this triangle here is going to be the exact same, the same measurements as the one on top. Now, on top of that, we've actually got two other sides. We've got two rectangles, this one at the front over here. And then there's also one at the back over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just draw them connected to my rectangle. So here in the middle. So here I've got this rectangle over here. I've got this rectangle over here. And the other thing to notice is that when you actually folded these up, the yellow and the uh, green rectangles, they shared a common side with my top triangle. So what I can do is I can say that actually this side length is going to be the same as the triangle. And this side length is going to be the same as the triangle. Okay. And so that's my rectangle, oh, that's the net of my triangular prism. So here, once again, when we're drawing the net, we're trying to imagine what would happen if we were to unwrap the um, 3D shape. Okay, let's have a look go at another example.
Now, oh, actually, not go with another example. So we're going to actually have a look at how calculating the surface area by using these nets. Now, here are the steps that we need to do when we're trying to calculate the surface area of a 3D prism. First thing we want to do, draw the net of the 3D shape, including relevant measurements. So draw the shape with 3D shapes, including relevant measurements. So what we did here with identifying the sides that had the exact same side lengths, this is a, the really important step because you want to be able to know the measurements for your different shapes in your, tri uh, in your prism. So you can actually calculate those areas. The second step is then to identify the shapes that make up the net and also any duplicates. So usually with a um, with pr uh, prism and also any 3D shapes, they're often going to be sides that have the exact same measurements as each other. And so what you can do is you can go, okay, for those sides that are exact same measurements, I can just say there's two lots of them and I can just do one calculation for one of them and then just duplicate it again. So for the second step, we want to just identify what shapes make up my um, net. The third step is then to calculate the areas of each one of the shapes by finding the relevant area formulas. So here, if you remember from when we did um, areas earlier in this top area a couple of lessons ago, we actually have a few area forms that we need to use. So for example, notice with all of our shapes, we've got rectangles. So here we're going to need to use the rectangle formula, L times B. We're also going to need to use our triangle formula. So A is equal to half base times height. So this is for a rectangle and this is for a triangle. And so we need to use these formulas to help us find those areas of those particular shapes. And then the final step is that we all just, all we need to do is just add all the areas together. Okay, so let's have a go with an example here. Calculate the surface area of the following shape. So here we have a triangular prism we wanna find the area of. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna draw the net. So let's start off. I've firstly got this side over here, this triangle. And so I'm going to draw it here. I'm going to go, okay, there is a triangle here. And I'm also going to include the measurements. Now here it's not to scale, but here I've got this side is eight centimeters. This side is six centimeters. And the other thing is I actually know the length of the long um, slanted side because on the other side of my triangle, I've actually, of my triangular prism, I've got this length here. And that's actually going to be the same length as here. So this is going to be 10 centimeters. Okay. Then from there, I'm going to start unwrapping and connecting this triangle with other shapes that it's connected to. Now, I'm actually going to do it in a particular order. I'm actually going to connect it with the bottom rectangle just because when I draw it out like this, it's actually going to look a little bit neater. So I'm going to connect it to that bottom rectangle. So here, it's got that length of six centimeters and it's connected to the bottom rectangle. And what I need to do is I need to figure out, so I know that this side is six centimeters, but I don't know what the longer side is. If you have a look at the diagram, that's just 15 centimeters. So I'm going to include that 15 centimeters here. And then connected to that 15 cent, uh, that bottom rectangle is I've got this triangle on the other side. And what happens is that this triangle is actually going to be the exact same as the one at the top. So I know that this side over here, this side over here is actually going to be this side over here, which was eight centimeters on my first triangle. So that's eight centimeters. And I know that this side over here is going to be the same as the 10 centimeters there. So this is going to be 10 centimeters. Okay. Now that I've done that, I need to connect the other side. So here I've done this side at the front, I've done the side at the bottom, and I've done the side at the back. But if you notice, there's actually a side to our left-hand side. So there's one side over here, this back rectangle, and we've also got the top rectangle where the slant is. So here I'm gonna draw the back rectangle. Now that's connected on the left-hand side. So here I've got this back rectangle. And as you notice, we need to include the measurements. From the other rectangle, this side length over here, actually maybe I'll put it in yellow. This side length over here is actually gonna be the same as the 15th. So this is also gonna be 15 as well. But I need to figure out what this side length over here is. Now, if we fold it back up, what we will notice is that for this back, back rectangle is actually going to be this side over here. So this is going to be eight centimeters. Okay, the other side that we need to do is on the right hand side. So here I'm gonna add that extra try a uh, square here, oh, rectangle here. And so I know that the side lengths here are gonna be 15, that's great for me, but I don't know how long the, uh, the bre uh, breadth of this rectangle is. But if I folded it back up, you would notice that it actually matches up with both of these 10 centimeters. So this one over here is gonna be 10 centimeters. Okay, so that's me drawing the net of my 3D shape and also including a few measurements. So here, because they give us measurements, it's actually quite important to include those in so that we can calculate the areas. So that's the first step, drawing the net, including relevant measurements. The second step is then to identify what shapes we have in this uh, for the surface area. So here, what you notice is that actually we've got a few shapes involved. Uh, first of all, 
we've got two triangles. Um, and those two triangles, what I said earlier was that they actually have the exact same measurements. Notice we've got eight centimeters on both of these. We've got uh, six centimeters over here for both of them. And we've also got that 10 centimeters as well. So for my surface area, it's actually gonna be made up of two lots of my air, uh, two of my triangles. So two lots of area of my triangle. So I'm gonna write it like this. So my surface area is made up of two triangles. Excellent, so I've identified the first set of shapes. I've got this face done and this face done. Okay, we've still got these three remaining shapes. Now, if you have a look at the three remaining shapes, even though I've drawn them all the same, are they the same tri uh, rectangles? Well, if you have a look at the middle one, for example, this one over here, it has a, uh, it has 15 centimeters as its um, length, that's great. But the breadth is six centimeters. So we've got one here that has breadth, length of 15, breadth of six. Length of 15, breadth of six, that's our first one here. But if you move to the left, well, we've actually got another rectangle here. Does it have the same dimensions? Well, it's got a length of 15, it shares that yellow side, which is great. But it has a breadth of eight. And so here, this one is not gonna be the same. And that's gonna be apply the same to the triangle uh, rectangle on the right as well. This one has a breadth um, length of 15. So they all have that 15 centimeter side, but this one has a breadth of 10. And so these are not gonna be the same triangle rectangle. So what I need to do is I need to actually add these three rectangles separately. So this is gonna be area of rectangle one, number one, plus area of rectangle two and area of rectangle number three. Okay, so that's me identifying the shapes here um, and this um, identifying the shapes here and noticing any duplicates. So the thing I did differently was I noticed that there was two lots of the triangles. So I duplicated it and I multiplied it by two. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm gonna actually use the area formulas for each one, find the area formulas for each one of these. So the area formula for a triangle was, so um, a half base times height. So I'm gonna multiply that by two because there's two of them. Then for all of my rectangles, it's just L times B for each of the separate length and bases for my rectangles. Okay, so the second step, I just write out the formulas for each one of these. Now that I've done that, I'm just gonna substitute and find out the areas of each one of these. So the, for the first uh, shape, the triangles, I've got half times base times height. So let's have a look at the triangle. What is the base and the height of this triangle? Well, if you remember from when we were looking at the area of 3D shapes, the base and the height is actually the perpendicular, uh, the two measurements are perpendicular to each other or at right angles to each other. And so here, that happens to be my eight centimeters and my six centimeters. So I'm gonna do half times eight times six, okay? So that's for my triangles, that's the area of my triangles. And the reason why I have two at the front is because I've got two lots of them. You've got two of them here. Then we're gonna go and have a look at our three rectangles. Let's start from the left and move to the right. So the first one is this rectangle over here. Now the length we said was 15. So all of these have a length of 15, but the base for this first rectangle on the left is actually the eight centimeters over here. And so here, this is gonna be 15 times eight plus, and I'm just gonna repeat the process for all of my rectangles. The one in the middle, length of 15, breadth of six. So it's gonna be 15 times six, plus, and the last one, we've got a length of 15, breadth of 10. So it's gonna be 15 times 10. Okay, so from here, you can actually put this in your calculator if you would like to. Um, I can actually go ahead and calculate. So my two triangles, this is gonna actually give me 24. So two lots of it is gonna be 48, plus uh, 15 times eight gives me uh, 120, uh, six times five, 15 is gives me 90, and uh, one, 15 times 10 is 150. And so when I add this all together, this should give me 408. Now, we also need to include a unit here. Surface area is just an area. So what I'm gonna do here for the unit is I'm gonna write centimeters because they're all in centimeters, squared. So this is in centimeters squared. So even though we're dealing with a 3D shape, it's still an area, so I need to put squared units as a, at the end. So that's how we can calculate the surface area of a 3D shape, okay. So let's just do a quick summary of what we looked at today. In today's lesson, we talked about surface area. And surface area is a total area on the outside of a 3D shape. And the way that we found this was by firstly drawing the net of our 3D shape. And then from drawing the net of our 3D shape, we can actually calculate the area of each of the shapes that make up, each of the 2D shapes that make up my 3D net. So that's it for today's lesson, Year 8. If you have any questions, feel free to send me a message or um, email. I'm more than happy to try and answer your questions. But until, uh, until our next lesson, Year 8, I hope you guys are staying safe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.